What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an extension for SketchUp that lets you align the ends of objects with other objects. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So Mick Align Ends is a tool from uh, Mariocha and you can download this from Sketchication. I will link to it in the notes down below, but basically it's a tool that allows you to align the endpoints of edges to nearby objects. This gives you the ability to create some really interesting shapes. So let's jump over into SketchUp and take a look at the way that it works. Uh, basically what you do is you install and enable the extension and then when you do that um, there it adds an option in here for align endpoints. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to select the ends of objects and then tell this to align to the nearest object. So if I was to select these ends for example and I go to extensions and I click on align endpoints that's gonna give me the ability to align endpoints along whatever axis you select. So in this case, right, it's gonna be in the Z direction along the Z axis. And so notice how there are different options for different ways that you can do this, right? To the nearest down, to the nearest up. We'll take a look at those in a second. Um, but then you've also got options for lowest, highest, all those different things. In this case, we just want to the nearest positive. And so if we click on okay, Notice what that's gonna do is it's, that's going to take all of those edges and it's going to align them with the nearest object in here. Now, one thing to be aware of in here is uh, the topology of the model will get changed by doing this. It kind of has to in order to maintain shapes and faces in here. But notice how these become triangulated shapes like this once we do that because we move these up and they're not on a flat plane anymore. But we could take these objects right here and we could use align endpoints right here, do the same thing. So to nearest positive on the Z axis, click on okay. And so notice how now we've got all these shapes in here that are aligned with the surface right here. And then from there, you might take a shape like a joint push pull from Fredo 6 and push pull those objects if you wanted those to be like in 3D or something like that. So if I activate joint push pull like this, it's going to thicken these objects. Now you do want to pay attention again um, to that triangulation in here because that can kind of affect the way that your shapes look. But overall, it still gives you a pretty good result in here. There's probably one of these joint push pull options would probably give you a better result even with that triangulation. But you can see how this makes that really easy. And so not only can you do this on straight surfaces, you can also do this with curved surfaces, right? So if you have curves here, so for, for example, there's, there's this uh, sculpture that goes on when you drive into the Denver International Airport that looks like this. And basically it's a pair of curves in a wave and the curves are just slightly offset, right? So the bottoms are a little bit different than the top. It would probably take a fair amount of time to model this manually. And so in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna move these out so that they're on the same plane as the curve right here, but then I can select these. And in this case, we wanna align these to the nearest on our Y axis. So I'm just gonna select the Y axis right here, click on okay. Notice how that's gonna take those and it's going to align them to the nearest object. Then we can do the same thing over here. So extensions, align endpoints to the nearest Y, click on okay it's gonna move those in here. So notice what that does is that takes all of those vertices and it basically aligns them to the nearest point on the nearest object. So this can work not only for like a singular edge, like a curve, but it can also work on a surface. And with the surface, it's going to work the same way, but in this situation, what it's going to do is it's going to find the nearest point on the surface up here. So not just on an edge, so anywhere on the surface. And so in this case, what we would do is we would select these. And first off, I want to note that in this situation, you don't want to select whoops, we want just the edges. So I'm just going to right click, go to select and deselect faces. But the first thing is in this case, you don't want to the nearest minus and the Z axis, because that's going to move these down and find the nearest point on that face. You want the nearest positive. So we're gonna take this, go to align endpoints. And I'm really bad about forgetting to deselect the actual faces. Um, but now if I take this, align the endpoints, we put it on the nearest positive like this, what that's gonna do is that's gonna move all of these up and it's going to move those vertices so that you can align with the nearest, uh, the nearest point where the vertices are going to intersect 
in a vertical direction like this. So you can use this to create things like uh, these columns that run into an organic shape like this. And so one thing to note about this is you can use this to do things like roads and other things like that. One thing to be aware of though is that your topology starts mattering a little bit more. So these are basically two surfaces that I've created and they look exactly the same. But if you were to uh, triple click on this one, notice how that shows you the hidden geometry. On this one, I use the extension Curveloft in order to generate this surface, while with this one, I just filled the ends in. Well, in this case, what this tool is doing is this is finding all of the vertices that you have selected and moving them down. So if we were to take this object right here and run Michelin ends, Notice how what it does, and I'll go ahead and, whoops, I'll go ahead and hide this, is it creates this triangulated geometry in here. It has to create the triangulated geometry in here um, so that it can actually generate the surfaces, right? Because these aren't 100% flat, so without the triangulation, it can't really do that. But the problem with that is it's just not a super good mesh. Right, so like all the triangles in here, you've got like multiple edges running along this one. It, it just doesn't really give you a very good result. Where if you use a result like this one over here, and I'm just going to do a triple click, then I'm going to deselect my faces, but notice how this has a lot more supporting geometry in here, right? So instead of just moving the edges and creating a ton of triangulation, what it's going to do instead is it's going to move each one of these vertices down and it just gives it more data. Right, so if I was to do an align endpoints like this and click on OK, if we were to look at this, note that you do get triangulation in here, obviously, but it's a much cleaner, better looking mesh. So anytime you can add that additional mesh detail in here before you run that, um, it's going to give you a better result. So subdivided meshes, meshes that have grids and other things like that are going to work a lot better with this tool. And so within this tool, we've also got the option in here to align objects based on a Z value. So let's say I was to take a surface like this one. So say you were to take this one, right? And you were to go into extensions. In this case, we've got options in here for the lowest, the highest, the middle, the average or the custom. So let's say we were to select the average, what that's gonna do is that's gonna take the average height of all of these vertices and it's going to align them to that location. So if I click on okay, notice how it comes in here and it finds that average height in here like this. You could also come in here and set this to align your endpoints to a value along the Z axis at a custom value. And so what this is going to do is this is going to move these based on your model origin. It's gonna move them in whatever direction your blue axis is facing. So note how the uh, dark version of the blue axis is moving up. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna move all of these objects to a height above this axis location of whatever I put in. So if I typed in a value of let's say like 18 inches um, and clicked on okay, it's gonna take all of those and it's gonna move them up 18 inches, right? So if I was to draw like a segment right here, down, see how it moved it up one foot six inches or 18 inches. And so you can also use these other options in here to align to like your lowest point, your highest point, right? So if I select the lowest point on the Z axis, it's going to align all of these to whatever your lowest point is. In this case, your lowest point was all the way down here, right? If you were to do the same thing over here, and pull your highest point, most likely it's going to move all of these to like this height right here. But let's take a look. And I wanna get only edges. But if I do this to the highest on the Z axis, you should be somewhere right around here. And yeah, you are. See how it aligned it to that highest point right there. So you can use this to pick out your average, your highest or your lowest in addition to those custom heights. That's it for this video. If you want to check out my ultimate guide to SketchUp extensions, make sure you go to the sketchupessentials.com slash extensions for more information. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.